Okay, so this is uh, basically this video is about um, the next stage in sort of how I've been designing the trap. And essentially, this trap you see here now, this is the still the old one um, before the last one you saw in, in video number four. And this mouse, as you can see, is a lot different from the other ones. And when you see the way it behaves, you can see why I call it paranoid mouse. So as you can see, it had a look around there. Um, and so now it's, it's gone back out. And one thing you notice about this mouse is it sits there and just, it likes looking around. Now you think that maybe the mouse is doing all this because it's clever. But in the end, I had to call it paranoid mouse simply because it just seems to um, just really, you know, it's just really suspicious of everything. Now you're probably wondering why it seems to be staying on the right hand side so much and the conclusion I came to is simply because of the trap, manufacturer's trap which is on the left and so as you can see it's just you know investigating the um, the bait but no it's, it's not really that uh, eager and at the moment I'm using like peanut butter as the bait and I don't know, after observing this mouse, I have a feeling that it might not actually like the peanut butter that much, but we, you'll see why I say that later on. So as you can see, it's still just sort of basically just shuffling around. And you can see this is still the old design where I've used the sort of cardboard, um, sort of cardboard prop. And this one here still has the five second delay. And so, as, so now, as you see, I've moved the manufacturer's trap away um, just to see if that will help to actually convince the mouse to um, stay under there for a bit longer. So here he is again, having the usual look around, even though nothing's there. Yeah, and see, this time it's not so not so weary because the manufacturer's trap is on but one thing you notice about um, and you'll see this in any mouse that I actually have a video of and that is mice basically are weary about things like objects on the ground so you notice how the, the actual trap is above its head and what you'll notice, and you'll see this with every mouse that is in the videos that I have. And that is that the mice essentially have no clue about the actual uh, part of the trap which is above their head. So all they care about is whatever's on the ground and that's it. So if you, so essentially from observing these mice, what I've noticed is that if you want to design a trap, which is literally 100% effective what you have to actually do is you have to make sure that it, it involves something or parts which are not on the ground and the only important thing even you notice here that the one problem with this particular trap which seems to be having an effect on how the mouse is behaving is that the bait is actually inside the cardboard and what that means is in order to get to the bait the mouse would have to go in into the cardboard which would then mean it has to go onto a different floor surface and the one thing i've noticed is that some mice actually don't seem to like that so when you have the bait positioned somewhere which is like on another something else like a, a trap which is flat and the bait is on the trap you'll find that some mice, the more greedy ones, will actually go on there. But then the paranoid mice, like this one, will be a lot more reluctant to actually go onto the surface. And that's what one thing I've noticed about these tracks. Because notice how the mouse has no problem going over the floor itself. And to me, this is like the big secret of how to design an effective trap. Right, so, so that's the end of that trap. So basically now I'll switch over to the next one. 
where I've um, well you notice two things first thing is that the cardboard is slightly lower and what I've actually, actually this trap now is um, I've made it so that you don't have to go onto the um, onto the actual cardboard now this worked in the previous mouse where it actually went straight into where the bait was and I could drop the trap manually on it and also this trap also doesn't have the delay anymore but the thing about it is I was going to drop it onto this mouse but then what I realized is that I might as well give the old sentinel a chance since I you know uh, the code was almost finished and so because this mouse was um, getting a little bit annoying I was going to actually trap it here but I thought I might as well you know leave it till next time because even if I tried to trap it this even the half second delay might be enough to to make a difference so as you can see he's, he's, after all the sniffing around he's not interested in going into the you know even though it, it's flat so now here finally this is essentially the final version and as you've noticed the parts into the bait be clear now and so he's coming having a look around and now you probably think oh this this mouse is still too clever even this final Arduino Sentinel the mouse basically is too clever for it but I think in the end the only conclusion I could come to is that this mouse actually has some sort of slight mental problem and I think that's essentially what's happening so and so you notice he went and had the sniff so you think now after all this that this is basically the, the end and you know the mouse is too clever but I think in the end all that's really happened is it's just the paranoia of this particular mouse because it's the only one I've noticed which actually is was acting like somehow it you know could work out it's a trap but as you'll find out essentially the mouse really doesn't know what's going on and the simple reason you know that is because of how easily it went under the actual part that drops down you notice at no point did this mouse ever not go under it and at no point did he even think that going under it was a danger and I think that's essentially something in the makeup of mice in that they only care about predators that they can see which are on the ground and obviously if they see something moving uh, above them then they won't um, you know th then that can be a predator as well but then of course all they do is just run away and you notice how nothing much is happening on the screen at the moment and the reason why I've done this is because what I want to show is exactly how long this mouse stayed away doing its investigation because because you think that yeah now it's, it's you know over because the mouse is just too super clever but in the end I think all it really is is just the mouse is just paranoid so now here it comes back after doing it searching around and so now finally so he did a quick nip in there but you can tell finally the time has come where it actually wants to go for the bait and bam there you go so there and the thing about this is that you might think that oh this particular trap I actually manually triggered it or something or I was but I'm actually out at a job at the moment so and when I connected in remotely to actually look at the status of the trap I noticed that even when it got into the evening the trap hadn't struck so I thought well maybe you know uh, at the time I called it safety mouse but maybe paranoid mouse had um, basically was too clever for it and so at this moment I think I'm actually on the on the bus when this happened so what I did is I connected in remotely and then noticed that the actual trap was down and so then I realized that finally the sentinel had had done its job and caught this mouse which was actually quite annoying because all the other traps I had were of course um, not really of much use and the designs as well didn't help and now finally the Arduino sentinel has actually John done the job. Okay, so then we have safety mouse finally captured. And as you see in the 
Well, I presume I'm going to do the video before this. Okay, so now I've transferred the safety mouse into a half price dustbin, and so I'm actually going to carry Moho out. You can see, yeah, I've done a bit of a He's decided to wet the bottom of the uh, admittedly when a mouse decides to urinate there's not much comes out so at least he doesn't flood the place. But as you can see, safety mouse is there ready to be transported. And you see it's actually late at night. But um I prefer to have safety mouse out of here tonight rather than waiting till the morning. So at least it can sort of you know get a bit used to the environment as well. Okay so here we are going for a night walk. Basically we're taking on safety mouse for a, a walk. Oh, looks like he's walked in his urine as well. Such a messy mouth. So, since this mouse is, was the one that forced me to improve the track to the level where he just jumped into it, I thought I might as well take it out the same night so it can go out and, and fertilize the ground rather than the carpet at the house. Okay, so I'll start, I'll start filming once I get to the release site. Okay. Okay. Okay, so safety mouse is still still with us. Um, Looks like he's walked through his urine again. Uh, see, that's how these mice can end up messing up your place. They just wet them, wet the place up, and then they run through it. So that's obviously one of the reasons why you have to actually get them out of your house because yes, they can be spreading diseases into it. So anyway, let's um, let's get safety mouse on its way. Let's see. I'll see if she must handle three then. So safety mouse wants to play it safe again. Come on. Yeah, there we go. See, this is the problem with playing it safe so the only option is you have to do it the hard way so let's see the safety mouse goes now it's off in the grass okay, so that's another mouse release a bit late at night but Okay, this is just a brief overview of the um, Arduino IR Sentinel. So this is the transmitter that I was using. Basically, it consists of a um, Arduino. Um, a nano and it's got like a NRF24 transmitter button and a little beeper just for when it it goes off and that's just the power for the server and then that's the sort of rest of the the system there so what I'll do is I'll, I'll go into a bit more of a um, in-depth 
description of it in another video. Okay, so that's the end of the video. So please subscribe if you want to get any more, more information about the Arduino Sentinel or have a look at any of the other new videos that I'll be coming out with. Okay, thanks for watching. And I'd also like to acknowledge my God as being the one who has given me the skill to be able to configure and set up these traps so that they can be used successfully.